British Prime Minister Theresa May, meanwhile, signaling that she is not interested in keeping, quote, bits of membership of the EU as Great Britain's a Brexit strategy starts to take shape. I asked JP Morgan Chairman uh, and CEO Jamie Dimon about that. He explained to us how Britain leaving the European Union will affect his bank. Will he move jobs? He said it's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm worried about the Eurozone, and you know, the, the, to me the issue about Brexit was always about what does it do to the future of the Eurozone. So the Eurozone is one of the great endeavors of all time. Mankind got together and said, let's live in peace and not kill each other every time we have a problem. It wasn't just World War II and World War I, but the Napoleonic Wars, the Franco-Prussian Wars, the Hundred Years' War, the War of the Roses, and they wanted a common market. So those two things still exist for the Eurozone to say, let's, let's, let's accomplish those things. You know, a common market would be huge economic benefit for everybody. It kind of got bogged down. And now it's running into deep political issues and disagreements about how Brussels functions, labor and flexibility, immigration rules, and stuff like that. So I'm in favor of them perfecting the union. I think going backwards is really, really hard. Monty DePashi, you know, and you know, we, as you know, we tried very hard to have a private solution for that. Monty DePashi is a small little issue. Okay, even the ECB came out and said it's an eight billion dollar issue. The Italian government can take care of that with the snap of their fingers. It's a man-made problem because we've put rules in place that don't allow them to do it. And so, and it was the American, Italian government doesn't want to hurt retail investors. And I agree with them, by the way. I think that would be a shame. So that's not a financial crisis. That's a little problem that's being allowed to fester because we don't have a real solution for it, a simple solution. So um, I think the, the banks in Europe, they need to be allowed to finance the growth of Europe. You know, banks in Europe are far more important to Europe than banks are here. You know, it's a much bigger part of their, their financial markets. And, you know, I think they've been through years of rules. Let, let them take a deep breath and finance the economy. That's what I do. Fix Monte de Pashi so it's not a flashpoint for, for the economy. Have you begun to think about what you're going to do? The real issue for Europe, by the way, is to focus on the issues which are causing very slow growth. That is a huge political issue everywhere else. And that is a, around, you know, you hear these complaints around labor and flexibility, capital and flexibility, taxation policies. If they don't do that, the Eurozone is going to be relegated to decades of low growth. Have you begun to think about, yeah, obviously you have, have you decided on anything in terms of what you're doing with your people in London as a result of Britain leaving the European Union? What's going to happen there? Uh, so it is, this is a negotiation between one party and 26 others, all of whom have a veto. So if anyone thinks they know the outcome of this negotiation, they aren't right. And we have to follow the laws of the land. So we're not trying to change the will of the European people, the British people. We have to do that. But since we don't know what it is, we have to look at the potential outcomes. And they go from not much, if they have able to passport, we can do what we do today. And if they take away all these rules and requirements, we'd have to move lots of people. I don't want to do that. I'm not doing that saying as a threat. But we would have to put people and maybe even data centers and stuff in Eurozone countries. So we are preparing what our, uh, our response will be, hoping there's some kind of transition period. But again, we're not, all that means is that when the negotiations are finished, they say, okay, banks, here are the new rules. We've got three years to accommodate to them. If we have to do it right now, we have to, we're guessing. So we have to make a lot of changes in the guessing world, and that could be very expensive and not good for the Eurozone. That can inhibit growth in the meantime. So we'll, we'll be prepared. We'll, we'll do whatever we have to do to serve our customer the day after Brexit. And, you know, my guess is it's going to be pretty painful. You know, that's one area that people were questioning in terms of the Trump economic policies, the trade. I mean, he already said that he's going to be meeting with Theresa May in the U.K. Your thoughts on that part of, you know, the economic policy, given that J.P. Morgan has business all over the world? Yeah. And so do most of the big companies around the world. So, look, I think there are legitimate complaints about trade. And though, you know, I'm not in favor of just throwing out, you know, NAFTA or throwing out, you know, I, I like TPP personally, but I think it's perfectly legitimate for a new administration to come and say, there are flaws. There are flaws in this, there are flaws in that. Let's open it up and do the right thing for America. We've given away too much. There are legitimate complaints. And so, you know, to me, to sit down at the table and try to sort those things out, you know, I'm hoping that the president-elect, when he's president, comes back and says, I renegotiate the best trade deals for the American public. And then also what I call trade assistance. While well, trade is generally very good, there are negatives to it. And we should acknowledge those negatives. Someone loses their job from it, loses income from it, has to move because of it. You know, let's acknowledge that and fix that and so that you, know, you don't have everyone wins a little bit and some people lose a lot. 
you know, so... Um, well, it's interesting that he's been so vocal, and there you have Carrier saying, okay, we're not going to send all these jobs out. And then you have Ford saying, okay, we are not going to do this, this plant in Mexico, or, or we're going to change our plans and do more here. Do you think he's done a good job of doing this, or is it calling out companies not a good job? I, I, I look at that as slightly different. You know, that's not, that's not policy yet. He's not president yet. You know, eventually he's going to be president, and you're going to have to need coherent, consistent policies that companies need, and they need certainty. In fact, you hear them, they talk about, they know that regulatory certainty, trade certainty, tax certainty is very important for the confidence of American business. And by that's both small and large companies. That's not just the large companies. And so I think this is more, you know, we had an election. He made some promises and stuff like that. He says he's going to bring a lot of benefits to some of these companies. And he's asking in the meantime not to do X. You know, so you know, a lot of them have come out and said, okay, we won't do X because we believe they're going to make these other things better.